Hey, 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 everybody. Um, it's Jürgen here at Polymash, and we're live. Um, so, uh, this is exciting. Uh, this week, earlier this week, um, Roadcaster uh, released a firmware update for their Roadcaster Pro. I mean, uh, Rode released a firmware update for the Roadcaster Pro. And um, I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, jump on a live stream and explore some of the new features. Um, in part for the Ecamm Live group that I've been lucky enough to be part of, Adrian Salisbury is putting on an awesome uh, set of tutorials and uh, in masterclass this week. Um, but also part for my podcasting community, who I know are using the Roadcaster Pro. And this update is actually a pretty significant update. So um, I wanted to uh, do a couple of things, do a little bit of a demo, uh, walk through some of the main new features, and then also maybe explore some ways in which live streamers could, in fact, maybe um, take advantage of uh, this device. So with that said, um, you know, let's jump over to uh, just a quick overview of what's included in this and why I think this is a significant update. Um, so one of the main reasons that uh, you know that I think it's amazing is that in the past one of the complaints that post podcasters had was that the effects on this mixing board um, are really just consisted of presets um, and weren't editable and so now with this new firmware update they are in fact editable um, and What's even more amazing is, is that these effects can be edited using their software and not just the device itself. Um, and you can basically now also publish um, a podcast and MP3 files and produce a finished episode pretty much on the fly on the device. Um, or as a result of a live stream like this, if I was recording it, um, I would have an instant podcast from it. I know that you can export your live stream later, uh, but still, um, there are some really interesting features in that. And um, they've also introduced, it, it, this device has music banks, and we'll go through an overview of what it is, really. Um, for those who might not be familiar, we'll just do a very quick review of what the device consists of. But um, you can have music banks that you can overdub and sort of create on-the-fly intros, outros, and repeatable snippets of audio that you might want to use over and over again. Um, and also one of the changes that they've introduced is global ducking, um, which means that ducking is when you're speaking and there's music in the background that the music actually gets uh, reduced. So for example, if I had a audio track that was playing in the background like this one is, the ducking basically allows my voice to sort of be clearly heard and it like limits the volume of the music track in the background. Um, so those are some of the really cool features that, uh, you know, that have just gone out. And um, I also wanted to tell you guys my story because we had some issues with the Rodecaster Pro when we first got it. And one of the things that uh, Rode is, is really known for is their excellent reputation and support. So they've been amazing. They actually sent me um, this microphone that I'm speaking to you on right now. Um, and that's a relatively expensive microphone. It's, um, you know, the Procaster. It's one of the premier ro uh, microphones that Rodecaster has. So I'm very appreciative um, of that. And uh, But before we continue, why don't we have a quick look at, um, you know, what this device actually is for the folks on this live stream that might not even be familiar with it. Um, so basically it's a podcast-oriented uh, production mixer um, and it allows you to sort of just connect it onto your devices, have a number of people in the room and um, and record and mix down a podcast including music snippets and so forth. Um, one of the amazing benefits is also that you can connect your phone via Bluetooth and that means that people can dial into your show um, without, without it being difficult at all. Um, so that's very, I mean, you can just call me on my phone right now and if uh, we were connected via Bluetooth, you know, I could ease you right into this interview. Uh, so for those folks who are not on Zoom or, you know, doing Skype interviews, this is sort of just an additional easy to do alternative. And um, 
of course the, the sound quality is really um, what's been amazing and like I mentioned in the you know when we first started this is what the um, effects used the section used to look like and some people had took issue with the fact that uh, you couldn't program that and that you couldn't set and replicate settings that the audio engineers the geeky folks among us um, you know would mix down in adobe audition you know have compressing setting compressor settings or have uh, settings for uh, eq that are pretty complex and it was would have been difficult to replicate that on uh, the roadcaster pro because well you know as you see it's just presets um, but now you can edit these in great detail and i want to show that showcase that off a little bit um, so uh, I think there are a bunch of advantages that live streamers would have with this. Um, and for me, those benefits would be, first of all, amazing sound. You know, if you want to get that broadcast rich sound on your microphone. I know Adrian uh, doesn't do the microphone in front of a camera thing, but since we are a podcast production agency, and uh, I was lucky enough to, you know, this, I actually got this for a client job, so it was paid for. Um, and it's a relative, it's around 500, something like that, um, $600. So it's a, you know, on the expensive side, but for us, it made perfect sense. Uh, a, because of the amazing sound that everybody in the room gets. I've used it on location um, for some, you know, major companies to conduct uh, on-site interviews. And so if you've got to go and pack up something to have just an amazing podcast production set up, um, you know, this, you know, makes you look ultra pro, but it also produces amazing sound along the way. Um, so the fact that you can have in-studio co-hosts as well as guests each with their own sort of high-end microphone. For podcasters, this is a big deal. You know, you can really produce NPR quality uh, podcasts and broadcasts right out of the box. Um, again, live streamers. For live streamers, I think that this ability to have guests just dial in via phone is an option that I don't see talked about too much. I guess that there'd be other ways in which that could be done. Uh, but this ease of having your phone become a high-def audio source via Bluetooth, you can also play, you can use an app, for example, that has sound clips and use that as the sound bank um, if, you wanted, if you wanted to go that route. Um, so the thing produces basically high-definition uh, podcasts on demand. It has those programmable sound banks right on it. Um, and, you know, we'll go into that. It's the... You can see that, uh, you know, here it is sitting here and the sound banks are, are pre-programmable both by you recording something into them by overdabbing over a piece of music um, or, and by mixing down stuff as well as downloading to it from uh, your device. So programmable sound banks are another sort of benefit that I could think of. This ability to overdub sounds and uh, create instant intros and outros or sponsor segments, um, you know, while you're on air, I think that would be fun to play with. Um, a big one is is that it does have mix minus. You know the thing that Ecamm has built in to reduce echo. Um, the you know you, uh, podcasters that are using traditional consoles, you know, break their little heads, me myself included, in trying to like cre you know create a mix minus where the guest doesn't hear themselves and doesn't experience an echo, and that's dead simple on this device. You just uh, click something in the USB settings, and it applies a mix minus automatically. Um, and then it also, and this is actually a new feature in the, or a, they've expanded this ability of having ducking across all tracks. That means your guests now will duck over the mu uh, over the audio tracks as well. Um, so with that, I thought, uh, you know, let's have a quick overview um, of the device um, and then go into checking out these editable effects. I wanted to, you know, cover that for my podcast peeps because I think that is definitely new. Um and, uh, you know, maybe we'll do a, a mini demo of just like recording a podcast on the fly while we're doing, you know, while we're doing this live stream. Um, so um, let's get going with that. Um, so here is, you know, sort of an overview, um, uh, you know, of the device. And you can see that it has uh, four channels that uh, correspond to microphones that are coming in. And each one of these channels um, can be configured at great depth. So if I press this one key, for example, um, you know, now if I look at the screen, I will, you know, I can start to 
um, program the, the the audio sound quality and what happens behind the scenes. For one thing, uh, Rode comes with microphone presets, and as I mentioned, you know, I was generously gifted by Rode this uh, Rode Procaster. So that's what I have configured here. But every bank uh, can have its own uh, preset. And there are some generic ones from condenser and dynamic microphones, as well as for specific settings for the Rode uh, line of uh, microphones, which are excellent. Um, the second thing that you can do is set the levels so that you're, you know, nice and loud in, and, you know, in the right zone, so to speak, on any mic that you hook up. Um, and by the way, these XLR inputs can also be with an adapter. You could put... Uh, go the Adrian route, so to speak. Um, you know, I know Adrian uses lapels or desk mics or other kinds of mics that might not have an XLR cable. So when we're on video and we're doing, uh, you know, productions where we're further away, we have like little lapel wireless mics, and we could plug those into the board just as easily. Um, so um, though that's the level setting. Um, and then the the new section basically is that we have a bunch of effects. So where before, and I'll show you this real quick, if I go, this is this is the new part. And I install, by the way, I, got, I took the risk of installing the beta, but it's really been rock solid. I haven't had any issues. It hasn't cut out on me. It hasn't done anything weird. So it's, you know, it's really been a... Um, solid beta experience from from my point of view um, but what i'm about to show you here is under hardware advanced settings under extras this is where you turn on and off this ability to enable the effects edit mode and this is what it used to be look like so if i went to um, you know if i went back to programming the channel one now you're seeing the presets here that some people, you know, had issues with. So, for example, I've always turned off this oral exciter because I just didn't like it on my voice. It sort of had a funky little feeling. But now what I can do is actually just turn it down a little bit and make it work for me. So these new effects really have added a lot of flexibility and capability into that. So I'm going to go back to... Um, pardon my fat fingers here, but I'm going to go back into the advanced settings under the extras and actually enable the uh, ability to uh, edit uh, the sound effects. And, uh, you know, if I do that now, I can go in um, to the channel number one and you see now that I have access to uh, really studio quality effects. For one thing, a compressor, and this would allow me to, if you've got a, if you're using Adobe Audition or Audacity or some other fancy software to create a custom sound for yourself or your guests, you, you're likely using specific compression settings. And now what you can do is save, as, save this as a preset uh, for yourself and basically emulate it so that, it, that the device produces that right out of the box. And that allows you to just hit the record button and produce a podcast that would be on par, that would be similar to listen to, uh, to your very carefully produced Adobe Audition post-production workflow that's usually necessary to do that. So um, the, uh, doesn't, there, there are some applications where this is really useful. If, you want to do, if you're doing daily shows, um, I would say that this could save you a massive amount of time. Um, you know, some people just like the post-production part. There's the removing of the ums and the ahs uh, that I suffer from, for example. Um, but still, the uh, the quickness with which you can do that without having to worry about all sorts of production settings and applying effects. Um, you know, I like this concept of being able to instantly just hit a button and produce uh, an episode. So for daily podcasters, highly recommend it. Um, for live streamers, no, same thing, I think. You know, you can get an audio quality here. Um, if you're geeky like that, you can get an audio quality here that is, you know, you know par none. Um, you know, you would have to have a, um, you know, pretty expensive mixing setup uh, in order to produce everything that these effects that are built into the device, you know, actually afford you. Um, so let's get back and uh, have a look at, uh, this is the compressor. The second one is the noise gate. Um, the noise gate is awesome because 
every microphone, every room, I mean, I've got an, might have an AC running, there might be lawnmowers going on outside. And you can um, basically figure out what the threshold is. So even if I, if I shut up for a minute, you can see that there's a tiny amount of uh, still noise that's coming from my environment. And the noise gate um, is brilliant at reducing and eliminating that background sound. And you can customize it for your microphone and for your environment um, you know, with this. Um, so typically noise gates isn't something that would be built into any old mixing console. You know, that's a piece of outboard gear and you have to have effect sends and receives or auxiliary sends and receives in order to, you know, really do a good job of, of doing, uh, of doing noise reduction. So again, here, this one is from my perspective, really solid and uh, gives you super clean tracks to begin with. Um, all right. So next is the de um, and that uh, it depends again on your microphone and on your own vocal qualities. Um, you know, I think some some people as like sound really sibilant. You know, like this s the s the, the sing effect reduces the frequencies uh, around four thousand hertz typically uh, that happen. You know, when you're pronouncing s's and you know these sharp sounds can be off putting, and the deesser basically is used to reduce that effect. Um, the next one is uh, this Aphex uh, Aural Exciter. And that's the one that I'm going to turn it off. And my voice now sounds maybe a little bit less bright than when I turn it on. Um, you can now fine-tune it by the frequency. And also you can determine how much you actually hear this in the mix. So if I didn't want any of it, I could just slide that all the way. I could slide that slider down. And if I wanted a lot of it, you can maybe hear the difference, right? So now I've got this oral excited. Now I don't. I never really liked it um, for my voice, but now I get this ability to just uh, tune it down a little bit, so to speak. All right. Um, next up is the high pass filter, um, and that's just this rolling the you know reducing the low rumble. And um, for male voices versus female voices, it's nice to be able to determine where the roll-off frequency is. And this means that you know, the human voice uh, operates above uh, the frequency of 60 hertz. I mean, for male voices, you might have some in the hundreds and the low 100 frequency range. Um, but for female voices, for example, um, you know, you're looking for as much as you can. So you can, talk, I mean, if you've got um, low hum sounds in the in the background uh, you know these basically allow you to reduce it so that's a pretty typical podcast setting to have a high pass filter high pass simply means that the only frequency that make it into your recording uh, are higher than you know this pass filter is, is set to um okay and uh, then lastly it has a reverb setting i haven't played with this much yet um I don't think I use it much. I mean, I still like the dry, broadcasty sound. But, uh, you know, if we turn it on, uh, I'm not sure. Like, if I go to a really large, let me see, uh, go really extreme here. <clears throat> um, so that might be something like if you're wanting to have fun that, you know, you that you can turn that on just for the minute and then turn it back off. But it's a little fiddly to do that live. Um, I think it's more sort of fine-tuning. Um, of when you're actually recording. Um, one use for that is that if you are having a guest on and the guest is in an echoey environment and then you're sort of like super dry, like the way I'm trying to sound right now, um, it's a good idea to try to bring them a little closer together. Just like Adrian was explaining in the Ecamm Live sessions that, you know, your heads want to look the same size, you know, uh, your video, your, your video quality, the, you're trying to sort of emulate the appearance that if you're on screen with a guest, you know, you're trying to look like you're kind of in the same space. And from an audio perspective, the same thing applies, right? So you're trying to look like uh, you're in the same space. And that's, uh, that's what this is good for. So I hope that... Um, this little overview of the effects was um, was useful, and I'm going to go back, uh, you know, all the way out back uh, back home. So that was the demo of the editable effects. 
Um, perhaps what we could do real quick is uh, show like what it actually looks like to record an episode on the device. So I'm going to go back, um, you know, look at this, look at this mixer. Basically, if I wanted to produce a podcast episode right now, all I would have to do is hit record, and it would spit out the, the you know, the um, it would spit out the software. Oh, before I do that, actually, um, hold that, hold that, hold that. I'm going to go back into editable effects and do something else, which is to actually um, show you guys the Rodecaster Pro shot software. Um, let me try and pull that up. So here is the little software utility that comes with the Rodecaster Pro. And you can see that you can program the sound banks. And that was basically it. You know, you could download your podcasts and retrieve the files saved on the, saved on the device. Um, but now you can open an effects editor. And this is definitely new. And this is definitely cool. So instead of fiddling around like I just showed you on the device itself, you can actually just go in for the you know compressor, the noise gate, for the de for the aural exciter, for the high-pass filter. You can do all of these things um, you know, right on the software. And, you know, maybe even here, using this and, you know, using it as an effect while you're doing a live show. If I wanted to now scream something in a cathedral, I'm screaming in the cathedral. Um, so that would be, a, a, I, I think, a more, an easier way to, to basically play with that uh, feature. But I think that this uh, piece of software, you can see a lot of information coming across the display here. You can play with and get visual feedback on how your compressor settings are doing. And you can set that up for the three microphone inputs. Um, I'm not sure why. And then there's a general one that can be applied to all the other channels that's something that you can actually do on the device that you can't do on the software but i think it's uh it's fine uh, meaning that on the software you know you're primarily dealing with the se or with the effect settings for the four microphone inputs um but yeah so i i think it's you know they've done an outstanding job of enabling this you know this software you know to to be very useful for the device and as you can see just the you know as a recap on the device itself, you have the four audio channels. Then you have your USB, which is the audio that's coming in from your PC. Um, you have an extra input. It, it's labeled by phone, so you can connect the phone either by by Bluetooth, but really all this is is an external input. And this is, for example, if I had a um, if I had a lavalier mic, that's where I would plug it into the back, and this is where I could then also control in the settings. Um, and look, look, if I was looking at the channels, this is what I was talking about, the smartphone input, which is just a tippering sleeve input, um, you know, I can go into particular presets or go into advanced uh, modes and basically, you know, apply settings for that as well. So high degree of flexibility for people that are, you know, com concerned about the sound. All right. So with that, maybe, uh, you know, let's go to the let's go to the recording and exporting an mp3 file real quick and i'll leave it at that uh, for this live stream so all right how do i do that right now i have um, on this button i have my podcast intro uh, programmed and that's probably what i would do um, so i'm going to just hit the record button do you have a podcast or want to launch one then consistently getting new listeners and growing your show is key. But most podcasters find that after the initial success of launching their show, listener growth stalls. Welcome to the Podcast Growth Show, where our mission is to help you implement a sustainable growth system for your podcast. So if you're not happy with how many subscribers you have, you're not alone. This podcast is here to help. I'm going to fade that out because I screwed that up. I didn't switch the view on the live stream to uh, show you guys what I was doing. So I'm going to just hit the record button again and we're basically done. Uh, so let me just repeat that and I might edit this out in the video version of it. So, um, you know, if I wanted to start a podcast recording and I have my intro and my music bits uh, that I can fade in and fade out during the recording uh, programmed on these buttons, all I would need to do is... 
you have a podcast or want to launch one, then consistently getting... Uh, I'm going to stop that. Um, and, you know, I could have another piece of music playing um, while you're recording, or I could do a live uh, intro to my intro music. You know, if I wanted that in the background and I wanted to talk to it, I could... Hey everybody, this is a live stream, right? So now I'm talking over it and I'm overdubbing uh, over the, um, over that, not overdubbing, but I'm just recording on top of the sound clips that I have here. Um, and this could include questions from listeners you that you can download. There's lots of ways in which these sound banks can become useful or in which you can use an iPhone app uh, that has sound banks to basically program additional audio clips that you would want to uh, you know put into your into your stream so um that's basically it um i'm hoping that this was kind of a useful overview on uh, you know on the new features of the roadcaster pro um, and the 2.1b beta firmware update that we've got so signing out um you know from polymash this is jürgen saying bye for now <laughs>